Hey friends, it's Ryland here, and I, today I'm gonna to go through a straightforward introduction to all the gear in our bag so that you know just what you need to go into your next wedding day with confidence. So here's the deal, we've all been there. There's so much gear out there and it's really overwhelming to try to make decisions about what new gear you need to invest in. We were right there too. Early on in our business, I was freaking out about whether we spend our little bit of money on this piece of gear or that piece of gear because it's all so expensive and we didn't have money to just buy whatever we wanted. But today I'm gonna to walk through everything that we learned along the way as we built our bag so that you know exactly what you need um, to start with and then what you can add on with later on and how you can build successfully over time to the point where you have everything you need to go into each wedding day and be ready to confidently conquer every situation you might face. So let's jump right in. The first thing to think about is your camera bodies. So we shoot Nikon. Um, I'm not really gonna talk about the difference between Nikon and Canon, but the key thing to think about is um, full frame versus crop sensor. So all of our cameras are full frame cameras, which means that the sensor inside is approximately the same size as a traditional 35 millimeter camera. So the difference between that and a crop sensor is that a crop sensor is significantly smaller. It's about 25% smaller typically. So what that means is when you're taking photos with a crop sensor, you don't capture nearly as much perspective as you do with a full frame sensor. Um, so it sounds like an obvious choice, right? Just go buy, go out and buy all the full frame bodies you want. But here's the downside. They are significantly more expensive, but at the same time, they're really worth it. Once you start shooting on a full frame camera, you'll never be able to go back. So now that we went through the bodies real quick, we're gonna go look at lenses. So the first lens that is our go-to is what's known as the Nifty 50. Um, it's a 50 millimeter lens. We have um, the ones that go down to aperture of 1.4. We find that to be super crisp and super nice. What's super awesome about a 50 millimeter lens is that it is the closest perspective to what our eyes naturally see. So photos that you take with a 50 millimeter lens just always look really natural, very comfortable. Um, it's, a, you can get, it's very dynamic, so you can get in really tight or you can back up and get a little bit more perspective, but it almost always looks good. The second lens that we use all the time is a 35 millimeter prime. This one is also down at uh, aperture of 1.4, and this one just gives you a really nice wide perspective relative to the 50, um, and is, gives you enough perspective for almost every situation that you might want, while still being able to go down to really low aperture. So this makes it awesome for shooting like indoors, while the bride and groom are getting ready, anytime you're taking group photos, this is what we always use. So let's stop here for just a second. These two lenses are what we use for 98% of every single wedding day. JP and I both have two camera bodies. One almost always has a 35, the other almost always has a 50 on it. Literally, for the two of us, 98% of the wedding day, just these two lenses. So these are the ones that you really want to invest in first because these are two of your most important lenses for every single situation. All right, so now I'm gonna go through a couple of the lenses that we use in that 2% of the wedding day. So the first thing is a 105, 105 millimeter prime. Um, this lens is essential for getting those super awesome, really tight detail shots that you see of like rings and jewelry and perfume and flowers and things like that. You cannot get those super tight ring shots without this lens. Um, you could try using a 70 to 200 or something like that, but it doesn't work because you can't get close enough. This allows you to focus very close to your subject while still being a really long focal length so that it's a really tight shot of even the smallest details. So this we found to be essential um, for our detail shots at the beginning of the wedding day. But then we put it back, back in our bag and we don't use it again after that. The next one that we use is this big guy, the 70 to 200. This thing is a monster. It is super nice and super awesome, but because it's so heavy, literally the only time we use this is during the ceremony. And the reason for that is because we don't wanna be intrusive during the ceremony. 
we want to try to stay out of the way and let that moment be sacred and holy for the bride and groom. And we really don't want to be a distraction. So that's when I pull out my big lens. I stand in the back or on the side of the sanctuary or outside or wherever it is so that I can get nice tight shots of the bride and groom without having to be very close at all or get in anyone's way. Now there's one thing I want to point out before we move on. Three out of our four key lenses that we use are all prime lenses. The reason we use prime lenses rather than zoom lenses is because they're smaller. They're really small, they're really lightweight, but they also can get down to really low aperture, which means you can let a lot of light in and get really good depth of field while being not intrusive. If, you, if I was holding this in your face, you would feel a lot more uh, nervous or intimidated than this little one. But I can get just as good shots with this guy as I can with this one. Um, so that's why we use prime lenses. Now, at the same time, there are a lot of great uh, zoom lenses out there. The 24 to 70 is a go-to for a lot of people, but we have found that this set of prime lenses plus our one big zoom lens, it gives us everything that we need for every wedding day, every single time. All right, so now we've talked about our camera bodies and our lenses, but there's a lot more to it than just that. So now I'm gonna go through a couple of the key things, odds and ends that we found to be super useful on every single wedding day. And the first thing, it's kind of surprising, is actually our camera straps. So we use what are called hold fast camera straps. These guys are leather, they're super nice. They go over our shoulders so that we can have a camera on either side, they hook onto the bottom of the camera. And man, they just make it so easy to pick your camera up and then let go of it while taking the load off of your back and shoulders. Um, they're just super comfortable for a long wedding day. When you're on your feet, carrying your cameras around for a long time, we highly recommend investing in one of these. They're not cheap, but they're totally worth it. Um, the other fun thing that we have is actually this old Polaroid, um, except it's not old. Fujifilm has made these new cameras called Instax. Um, they're super fun. They're really engaging. We sometimes pull these out um, with just the bride and groom, either on an engagement session or just while we're with the bride and groom, just because it gives them something sweet that they can physically take and put in their pocket and take home that night to remember their experience with us. And we found that to be really, really powerful and really fun. A um, couple other things, extra camera batteries. Uh, a couple notes here. We have explored using off-brand camera batteries. Um, they work great, but really we found that the on-brand camera batteries, although more expensive, last way longer than any off-brand version. Um, so they're worth investing in um, if you need, but if you just need backups, then you can go with some of the off-brand options. So the next thing we're gonna go through is um, our SD cards and holders. So first, just a couple things to think about. Your cameras, especially if you're shooting full frame and you're shooting in raw camera format, which is another topic for another time, um, those files are really big and you wanna be able to shoot really fast. So the truth is, is that you need pretty fast SD cards. We usually shoot for class 10 SD cards that are about 100 megabytes per second fast or faster. Um, we found that that gives us a good compromise um, between cost while being able to keep up with our cameras pretty well. Uh, but the key thing that goes with that is actually a nice little SD card holder. Um, we were really struggling trying to keep our cards organized until we bought this super handy Think Tank um, card holder. It has made a world of difference. The next thing that we bring on every, to every wedding day is a texture board. Um, this one, it, we just found at TG Maxx, uh, but it is incredibly useful for making awesome detail photos every single time, no matter where you are. Usually we lay this down, we put a, a bouquet of flowers here at the back, and then we set the rings with the other details right in front of it. So you get this really nice detailed neutral surface with these beautiful flowers in the background and it just makes the details pop every single time. Notice that this really isn't very big, but when you couple this with your 105 lens that's super tight, it makes for great photos literally every time. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is a good old fashioned lighter. Uh, this is super awesome for taking photos uh, of the reception details. If you think about it, really the best chance to take photos of reception details is before everybody gets there and sits down and puts their stuff everywhere. 
And so that usually is right before the ceremony. But they don't want to light any of the candles before the ceremony because they don't want them to just melt all over the place during the ceremony when no one's there. So we'll go around and we'll light a few of the candles on the head table to take photos before the ceremony. Then we'll blow them out and be done and not have to worry about it anymore. The next thing we're going to talk about is a business card holder. We uh, really struggled with keeping our business cards organized until some friends of ours made us this super awesome business card holder. Uh, they did a great job. Um, you'll see a link to their stuff in our show notes. Uh, but this has just been super useful and really handy for keeping our cards looking fresh um, and protecting them while also looking really cool. So that's pretty much everything that we have in our bag. That's a lot. But the truth is, is that we didn't get all of this right at the same time or right at the beginning of our business. We started with, two, with really just two cameras. They weren't even full frame. We only had a few odds and ends lenses. And then over time, we slowly built our portfolio of gear. Don't feel like you need to buy all of this stuff at once, max out a credit card and go into debt. Start with a 50 and a 35 on a full frame body and then rent or borrow whatever else you need until you have the funds in order to purchase those things for yourself. Don't feel like it has to take um, a certain amount of time. Really go at your own pace because you can always rent stuff for cheap. And that's a great way to go. All right, friends. So that's everything that we have in our bag. And we have found that this set of gear is just what we need to approach every new wedding day with confidence, knowing that we're going to be able to get what we need to get. There are a lot of options out there. And really remember that it's the photographer that makes the photo, not just the gear. But we have found that this gear is super helpful. The only gear that we didn't talk about today is all of our lighting gear. But don't be afraid because we've got a really exciting course coming soon that's going to go through all of that in super simple detail and give you exactly what you need to add lighting to the rest of your camera gear. So thanks for tagging along today. I hope that was helpful and informative so that you can go into your next shoot with confidence. Um, keep on the lookout for more and we'll see you soon.